Uh, good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning service. Um, hope everybody had a good day. It was a good Sunday school lesson. Nice sunny day out today too. Uh, we're going to start in prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day and thank you for your word. Thank you that we can study it and know you better and uh, and learn and follow you more, Lord. Be with us and guide us uh, through this time. May it uh, work in our hearts and bring us to a greater knowledge and truth of you. Help us and guide us through this day, Lord. Thank you. Amen. We're going to start in Nehemiah 1.1. 1, 1. Okay, Nehemiah 1, 1 through 8. The words of Nehemiah, the son of <clears throat> Hachelah. And it came to pass in the month uh, uh, Chislu, in the 20th year, I was in Shushan, the palace, that uh, Han, uh, Hane, one of my brethren, came and he and certain men of Judah, and asked, I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there are in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem it also is broke down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So we have a little little background. The uh, um, the um, the uh, Israelites had been had been given over for all of their they had over and over again. God would uh, bring them into captivity, and then they would, then He would rescue them out of captivity. And you just read the Book of Judges, and it was over and over and over again. Finally, they uh, were taken by the Babylonians, and then the Babylonians were taken over by the Persians, which were actually a little, a little better to the Jews uh, for a benefit of the time. God had said how long they would be in captivity, so or how long it would be until they would uh, have the, uh, till the temple, till the, yeah, till the temple be rebuilt and, uh, or the walls, yeah, till they bring them out. And so he was, uh, and so it came to the Persians and they, uh, and Nehemiah, they'd had several different uh, people and stuff and they'd brought, some of the people out of captivity and there were some left and they'd come back into their land and they'd rebuilt their houses but they hadn't really taken care of the temple at all or done anything with it well nehemiah was getting word that he from this people that the walls were all broken down and the gates had been had been burned with fire and that and all this stuff had been done uh, but nothing had been done to fix it yet and so he was and so he he got this word, and he wept and he mourned and he and he fasted and prayed um, for however many days it was. Well, we have a we have a a thing for us. We have different things that happen in our lives, different things that happen in people's lives and stuff like that. Um, yeah, how often we, we we of course pray, but how often do we really for for certain circumstances really uh really come to prayer for days where we really bring it to god and and really uh and even maybe you don't fast with food or stuff like that but you can 
there's all kinds of different things you can do. It's kind of personal suffering. And so you can fast from all kinds of different things, but, um, but God, uh, but God does instruct that, uh, that in certain circumstances that, that the church is known for fasting in different ways. Some people just can't, you just can't physically do it for too long. It's got different medical problems and stuff. So it, everybody has got to kind of go with what they can do. So, and, and, uh, but the, but he bought it, he brought it before prayer to, to God and he really, and he, he, he really wept and prayed for several days. Uh, we don't know exactly how long, though. We turn to Daniel 9. Daniel 9, start with verse 2. Daniel 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, made confession, and said, O Lord, the great dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So we have... Daniel had read Jeremiah and understood that there was that the time of of their captivity, the time of Jerusalem's uh, Jerusalem's desolation, was was to be over. And so he didn't just make plans. He went and sought and and sought the Lord and fasted and and prayed to God uh, that God would bring them out and uh, would fulfill what he had what he had promised. Now, Acts 12. Acts 12, verse 1. And now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the, un then were the, days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four uh, quarter, quarter nations of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So... Peter, so here Peter had been in prison and the church came before God without ceasing. They prayed and prayed. It doesn't mention they had fasted, but they they prayed without ceasing to God. They brought these things before God. And they really they 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 really felt in their heart and they really came and cried out to God. We'll go back to back to Nehemiah chapter one. I was in the right spot. Nehemiah 
just finish off the few verses. Uh, we'll uh, Nehemiah one five is where we'll where we left off. And said I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenants and mercies for them, that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear be attentive to thy thine eyes and thine thine eyes open, and thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee day and night. For the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sin of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father and my father's house. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember... I beseech thee the word of thy commandment, thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among many nations. So Nehemiah was remembering, and as he was praying, he was crying, confessing the sins of Israel. And Daniel had done very similar, where he had confessed the sins of Israel, brought them before God, that uh, knew that he was a loving and forgiving God. And that, uh, and they they were they were owning up to their to their sins that they had, and uh, remembering the different uh, the different things that they had sworn to God and what God had said that He would do if certain things happened, and He did them, and so He was just yeah bringing before prayer, and we also. He, as as we pray and bring things, remember that to bring us our sins, we're we're no different. We transgress against God all the time. We we come, we we do things that God doesn't want us to do, and it's it's easy to do, but we can, but we need to come to Him, to come to Him and uh, confess our sins, so that and He's faithful and just to forgive us. We'll go to chapter 2, Nehemiah 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of our Artaxerxes, the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of the heart. Then I was very sore afraid. He was he was not used to he was not sad in his, the king's presence. I imagine the kings didn't exactly like sad people around them too much. And seeing how they were very powerful kings, I mean, we see in with like Joshua that um, we don't know exactly what happened, but we know that the the king got angry with his with the the uh, the baker and the and his footman and his uh, what was it cupbearer? Cup That's right. I was trying to remember the same position. Joseph. Yeah, or yeah, Joseph. Sorry, Joseph. Uh, and uh, and he had uh, and so he he had they had not pleased him and so he was whatever it was that happened we're not real sure but so he sent them to prison so these uh, the kings had great power to do whatever whatever they wanted and so he uh, I imagine was a little afraid that he might uh, that he might suffer the consequences of uh, showing of uh, displeasing. The, the king. Uh, verse 3. And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city and the palace of my father's sepulcher lie, uh, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? And the king said unto me, 
for what dost thou make request? So I prayed to God of heaven. Here again, he didn't just answer. He came and brought his prayers to God. He brought them to God to because uh, he wanted the right things. I mean, how often do we say the, the do we say the wrong things? We say something stupid because we didn't we didn't think first. We didn't pray first and ask for God's direction. I know it happens quite often. So. And uh, so it's easy to do, but it's but uh, but Nehemiah brought it before God. He wanted he had probably only had really one chance at this. So he needed to get it right the first time. And uh, then. Oh, there it is. Verse five. And I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant found favor in the sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulcher, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall the journey be, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to the governor beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come to Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, for the wall of the city, for the house that shall I shall enter into. The king granted me according to the good hand of, of my God upon me. So we see that, uh, that his, his prayer, uh, God gave him just the right thing to say, and, and the king was, was happy to give and was happy not only to let him go, uh, you know, providing he had, he wanted him back eventually. He had an important job, so he wanted him gone forever. So he gave him a time frame, but then the king gave him help to to do his job, something he certainly didn't have to do, but but he uh, but he gave him help. Uh, we'll go to Philippians four. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So we see Paul reminding the church of the Philippians that um, that you'd be anxious or careful for nothing. That uh, we'd make sure to pray to God to bring all or all all we need to God, and He's faithful and just to 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 uh, to to do the things that He knows we need and within his own will that is but he he he'll answer our, our prayers um, in whatever way he sees is the best uh first first thessalonians 5. <clears throat> first thessalonians 5 16. Almost as good as Jesus worked. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to read 16 through 18, but rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So here, reminding them to pray, to pray without ceasing. Ceasing, we can we can bring our prayers and our petitions and the things before God, and He. He will give us the right words to say and give us the right things and, and guide us in our ways.
um, we see an example of somebody that should have uh, that should have done that in Luke chapter 12. Luke 12 verse 13. We'll start with we're gonna 12 13 through 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divides the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, uh, man, who made, who, man, who made me judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possess. And he spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This I will do. I will pull down my barns, I will build greater, and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, she didn't need help here. So, we have treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Why don't you take them outside? Um, and so he was, he had, it was his answer, his thoughts to himself were always, I will do this and I will do that. But he didn't bring anything before God. He, he went and just, and just did. How often do we run ahead of God and we, we run ahead of what his will might be. And, uh. And then we we do things that are not necessarily what God what God would have, and uh, and we don't have and because we don't have God's guidance in what we should do, we 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 do things either unneeded or too soon or or things that were just wrong that we may not see until afterwards what should have been done, but God can see the beginning from the end. It'll be a minute. I think it'll come back on, but you might need to get off Facebook. Oh, okay. Four, six, and seven. Be careful for nothing. We have really slow. Well, you might still be on. It's still broadcasting. Okay, well, Nehemiah chapter 4, then. It seemed to be still good, so. Nehemiah chapter 4.
we'll start with verse 1. I didn't know we're still going, but you could check it at the end to see. It's still going. Nehemiah 4.1 But it came to pass that when Sanballat uh, heard that we rebuilt the walls, he, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. He spoke uh, before his brethren, the army of the Sumerian, uh, Sumerian uh, and said, What do these feeble Jews Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in, in, in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heap of rubbish which they burned? Now Tobi the Ammonite was by him and said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall break down their stones. So when, when we as Christians, when we start, um, when we start, um, when we start doing things for God, it's not unusual for, for Satan to bring stuff against us. And so we have, we have that, uh, and so the, so here they were coming against the Jews and they were bringing all these different things all these questions will they do this will they bring back all of these things they used to do and then they're mocking them saying that oh whatever they build up a fox jumps on it it'll all fall down and and it, don't we get kind of the same thing you know oh we well, do all of this but it's of no good it'll all just leave or whatever it is that they're doing but but they uh but they don't uh but there's, but God, God knows best. God, God will guide us through our ways. Go to oh, well, we'll go on to there. It is chapter uh, verse four. Hear, O God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their indignity, and let not their sin be blotted out. For before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together, unto half thereof for the people had a mind to work so we see that they so they brought their petition before god and just kind of left it in his hands and then they started building and they had a mind to work they they had their mind set on what they were doing they didn't get distracted for a long period they didn't get distracted for a long period of time they went back to the work in which they had and they and they work together on what they had. Go to Ecclesiastes four eight. Ecclesiastes four eight through twelve. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother. Yet there is no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sore travail. 
two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lieth together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a three cord a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So we see that uh, close the door, go to grandma's room. And so we see that uh, we have we are stronger together. We're stronger with each other. We're we're stronger um, as as a group, especially if we bring our petitions to God and we have and with with God on our side, and with and with uh, with God on our side and with us together working, working as a team as as a as a unit. Um, we have so many more things we can bring. Everybody has those things that they can bring to the to to the to the to the table bring to the to to the task at hand bring to the church and so they and so we can work together as uh, we can work together as a group it's very important for for uh, any for any church to not to not be fighting against one another cuz satan wants us to to work against one another if he can get us distracted and doing anything else but the task at hand then then he knows that we that we can be that we we're not nearly as strong and we're so distracted with everything else going on that we're not focused on the tack on the task that we have uh first corinthians 12. First Corinthians twelve twelve. First Corinthians twelve twelve through fourteen. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body all so also is christ for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we be bond or free uh, and have been all made to drink into one spirit for the body is not one member but but many that was one too far. Um, so we see that the as as uh, as as God is made up of set of different. We have have different. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the body has lots of different members and lots of different things. But we work as one. As God is as God is one in and of Himself. We also work as one, and and we work as one in Christ. And so we have a greater uh, a, a greater strength, um, especially uh, especially with God on our side, with God, with with Christ, with us with us in Christ, we have we have we have that truth and that and that uh, and the, and the help for what we need. Uh, we'll go back to Nehemiah chapter four. Nehemiah 4, we left off at verse 7.
And it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah, the Arabians, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites uh, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayers unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burden is, is decayed, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the walls. <clears throat> and our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither, neither see, till we come into the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times from all places, whence uh, ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore set I in the tower, in the lower place behind the wall, and on a high place I even set the people after their families with their swords and spears and bows. I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and set to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren and your sons and your houses and your wives and uh, your daughters and your wives and your houses. And uh, so we'll, uh, and so you have the, the the people of the land they they saw things were going and they thought they would you know they would be discouraged and they would give up and but when they saw they continued and that things were actually coming together they were very angry satan does not like it when we have success and uh and so he they were angry and wanted to try to cause trouble they were they were trying to spread a fear and and stuff and trying to and so they they started and so they went and they and he reminded them that they were not to be afraid that god was with them and then they set up different guards and stuff to watch uh ephesians 4 29 We have uh, Nehemiah was trying to encourage them. He was encouraging them to look towards God, trying to edify them in the uh, to to keep going and to working for God. So Ephesians four twenty nine, Paul said, "Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers." To remember that what we say can be what we say or type or whatever can be can be used to edify the body and we're supposed to and everything we we say and and write or whatever has a purpose behind it and um and we we need to remember to continue to edify one another to encourage one another especially encourage to keep going in in times of trouble that that keep reminding uh, ourselves and, and others that God is with us. That we don't need to be afraid, or or if we're not afraid, then you know we don't need to be to get uh, to get worried or but to just encourage one another. First uh, Corinthians twelve. That's not the right one. First Peter four, my my. First Peter chapter four. Verse 
verse 8. First Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sin. Use hospi hospitality one to another without grudging. Uh, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, if any man speak, let him speak as oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do, do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Peter reminding us that, uh, that uh, above all that um, that the most important thing is love and that we and that we have a love amongst one another that we stick together in our in our love and that and that the love can the love we have for one another that it can uh that it it, it that it it bonds us together and it can cover the the different things that we have that happen the difficulties and stuff it can it can cover those and that God's love has covered, has 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 given us a way to take away our sins, and so the love we have for one another can help cover and correct and and take away the sins that we have amongst one another, and that that our that the love that we have, well, we can bring hospitality to one another without without having. Um, without feeling like you're doing it because it's your duty but because you actually want to you have you have a love for one another that you minister and give to one another and as with uh and so as we we can we can come and we can work together as a group we come together in in the love of god we we have uh we we know that um, God's word says that they will know we are Christians by our love that we have for one another. And the love that we have for one another is that we, we work together. We, we, we put aside the differences sometimes that we have. We can put those aside and we can work as a unit. We, we, we work not just for our glory, but for God. The, the evil enemies can work together too. And that has its own, its own troubles but them working together they're they're blind they're rummaging around in the darkness but we have the light we 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 can see they have they can't see any further you know than than what's right in front of them but god knows all that's coming and so we have the we have the greater ability to be able to to walk through this life we need to spread that we need to spread that love that we have for one another and the love for god and spread it out to the world that that they can see the light and that and that uh that they can come to know christ too and come to that same glory and that same uh goodness that we have in god that we can actually come together as a unit uh, you can't get too many people work together for too long in this world. It's it's difficult. There are so many difficulties we bring to the table, but in Christ we are one. In Christ, all those difficulties uh, come, and they kind of get they all those difficulties get can get kind of set aside and put in their proper locations, and we can work through things correctly as we should. Uh, Galatians six two. Galatians 6.2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We can come and we can, we all have, we have burdens and stuff that come in. We have, we have different things, but we can come together in our love and bear one another's burdens. We can, we can lift each other up and support each other in times of need. 
we can truly be there for one another. We'll go back to Nehemiah. I think we're on 15. So chapter 4, verse 15. Yes. Yep. Nehemiah 4, 15 is where we left off. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known un unto us and God had wrought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servant wrought in, in work and that the other ha half of them held both the spear and the shield and bows and uh, in Habergeons, uh, and the rulers were behind all the houses of Judah. Uh, they which builded on the wall, they and they that bear, burden, bear burdens with uh, those that laid, every one with one of his hands, wrought in the work and with his other hand held a weapon for the builders builders every one had his sword girded by his side and so builded uh, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me we have uh they were they were they were continuing with there may have been troubles but they were continuing to go and uh continuing to build but they weren't doing it unwisely just that they they had what they they had the different things to protect themselves and to be with and to be with them so that they could continue but if any trouble came up they were ready they were ready for whatever happened so we also we need to like where they were building walls we're also we also have a protection amongst amongst ourselves a protection that we need to continue to be in prayer for one another so that we can we can stand so we can be there in these times uh colossians 4. Colossians 4.12. Colossians 4.12 and 13. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god for i bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in laodicea and them in uh, heropolis and so we have like with uh, epaphras was kind of like their pastor uh he was bringing a message to them but um he he was fervent in prayer laboring always in prayer to that they may stand perfect that they may stand complete in god and we need to remember to pray for one another we rec we have to have each other's prayers to to help uh to help lift us up to help us to stand we can't stand on our own we need God. We need His. We need His His will and His Spirit, and we need Him behind. We need Him with us to go in front of us to 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 lead us. But we need His strength to stand in these times, and we stand together with the prayers we have for one another. We 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 can we truly need to need to work together in all aspects. Um, and like with the walls they were building, they were also, they were a protection, sort of like in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 
They were sort of like the armor of God, where it protects our spirit. We build up those protections and walls around us. Ephesians 6.11 Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may stand, stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness in this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. And so, uh, like with the walls they're building, we also need to, to, to put on those things that God has given us. They, God, God constructed them to make walls to protect them against the physical outside God has armor for us. It's his armor that he instructed us to put on. And when you combine the the armor helps with the uh, with the devil and his and his ways and his uh his his dark things that he wants to bring against us to impact our heart and soul and mind. We can also work together in prayer with one another that we can that we can really come uh come and work together and really help lift each other up and and come beside each other to walk down this path of life. Um, we have, uh, they also, we also can protect one another in, in all sorts of different ways, even, even physical ways when needed, but we need to rely upon God most of all. Uh, we'll get Luke 10.1. Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place, whether, whether he himself would come. And so he sent them out the first time. He sent them two by two because you have a protection amongst one another. And within within the church, we have we have a protection. We have all the multiple people around us helping to to protect one another from Satan and from different things that might come about. Also from our own uh, our own uh, valuable judgment from time to time, reminding us to look upon God, to look to Him, and not uh, doing things in our own ways and we get sidetracked and so we can the little things we can say to one another can help encourage us to walk with god to continue we need that prayer and encouragement to keep on that path it can be hard at times but uh but god is there with us and we can be with each other uh we'll go on to nehemiah 6 for the last part Nehemiah six fifteen. Nehemiah six fifteen and sixteen. So the wall was finished in the in the twenty and fifth day of the month of of Elu, and fifty and two days, in fifty and two days, and it came to pass that when our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were uh, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of, of our God. And so with us, when we, we, we work together as a church and we work uh, with God and come to God and, and we show the love for one another that we have um, through our lives, that we, really, that we really work as a unit in prayer and in, and in being there for one another and edifying one another and just talking through normal times, uh, the people look and when they see, they see us 
together as 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 one as one people and and they see all the work that happens um, with with God behind us they they see what what happens in our in our lives and and that everything that be, that comes to us that we that we take it in in the that we take it in stride we take it in God's in God's peace in God's ways and they see that we're different that we're different from what the rest of the world would have and that uh, we have this peace and this and this joy that are not that are not the same as everyone else Romans 8:31 Romans 8.31, Romans 8.31, what shall we then say these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We have, uh, if God is with us, uh, if God is with us, then who can truly be against us? I mean, uh, we have, we have David that can say that too, fighting a huge giant, uh, and we have those giants in our lives, and but if God is with us, we have we have more than uh, we have more than a conqueror with us. Um, we have Joshua, you know, stuck in a, in a prison cell, going through all this stuff. But yet, God had a greater plan, and there, and He had a greater thing going on. And then in the end, God was glorified amongst all. Then that's our main purpose in life: is to glorify God. To be there for one another and to glorify God and to spread Christ throughout, and uh, and anything the anything that the enemy brings, uh, God can bring it to God can change the uh, the the evil that Satan has and uh, and he can bring it to the good he can bring it to his good and his glory as a. Uh, as Joseph remember, as Joseph realized, and so we need to remember that as we as we need as we walk through this life, we don't walk alone. Not only do we have God, but we have one another, and there is a great uh, a great support and a great um, peace that we can have with God and with each other behind us, knowing that everything, everybody, and every one of us is walking through this together that we're there for one another. We uh, we have all these things that even we do that, you know, we come, we have different, there's always things coming through in this time. It seems like there's more that we have more prayer chain uh, stuff that comes through, but, and everybody uh, really works to pray for everything going on. And, and we work together with, uh, as they were painting, they were going and staining the fence and working on you know they work to put it up and to stain it and all the stuff that's been happening and at the church and and to keep everything up and to keep everything looking nice and and then just helping people out here and there the different things to try to help people physically and and mentally and and whatever so we can kind of lift each other up this these times can be very it can be very wearing so but we need to continue to be there for one another and to remember we don't go through this alone we we have one another and we have god the greater greater than just us we have god on our side so remember and uh so as we continue through this week we can we can just remember uh and come to god and be there for one another Hope everybody has a good week. We'll pray to end. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word and the reminding, uh, seeing what Nehemiah went through and what, what your people went through and and remembering that we have, we have you, we have each other, and and we can we can go through this one way or the other. With all that might come, we 
we have a greater glory and a greater uh, glory to come. Help us, Lord, through this week and guide us. Remind us to, to, to walk more with you and to be there for one another. Thank you, Lord. Help us. Amen. Amen. Have a good week and we'll see you next time.